So today we are going to look at the origins of entertainment, the origins of rock and roll, the origins of pop music, the origins of the entertainment, entertainer, the pop star, the celebrity. And we're going to do this by going on a quick stroll around Clapham. And that means that we are going to be looking at, looking at the hidden history behind music halls. Music halls were the first form of popular entertainment that, are, that emerged um, during the Victorian era. It, they began life in the 1850s on the back rooms of pubs with performers singing and dancing on tables. Before long, um, the music halls or this entertainment in the back of pubs would soon be transformed into a completely new form of entertainment. It would be picked up, it would become popular, it would be unsanitised and it would be put into these magnificent halls that were built around London and it would develop into what is now known as variety performances. So join me today as we explore the history of, of Music Hall as we walk around Clapham. We're going to look at three different venues today with all different parts of parts of history and look at some of the characters' performance as well as their legacy and their important mark they've made on the, on the landscape and how they are being used today. Okay, so join me as we go for a quick stroll through Clapham. We are going to start with probably the most significant and that is of course the Clapham Grand which is located just opposite Clapham, Clapham Junction. It was built in, 19, in 1900 and it would go on to become one of the most prestigious musicals in London. Acts like Little Titch, Marie Lloyd and Charlie Chaplin all performed here and this hosted variety shows right up until the 1930s when it was transformed into a massive cinema as the art of variety started to die in favour of uh, the new technology of cinema. After the birth of cinema, music halls around the countries really began to decline and unfortunately this is what happened to the Grand and by the 1960s it had been transferred or transformed from a cinema into a into a bingo hall and by the end of the 70s it had closed for good and it was in a sort of dilapidated um, state. However, in 1978, it was granted as a grade two listed building, which um, stopped it from being knocked down and luckily saved it from being transformed into the in the 90s into a Weatherspoon. So in 1991, luckily, the building rose from the flames like a phoenix. It was bought by Vince Power and his Mean Fiddler group, uh, a really significant and important uh, music agency, which was responsible for organizing lots of things like Reading Leeds Festival, he'd set up the Mean Fiddler in Holston and to this day runs like numerous music venues including the Fiddler in Kilburn um, and Powerhouse in Camden which is in the old Dingwalls building. So it, in this, under this stewardship and uh, it the building was in safe hands and it was reborn and numerous significant bands played there from Nick Cave to Oasis to The Verve, The Manic Street Preachers, Public Enemy and Muse. The list goes on. As well as big bands playing there, it's also really important in the club scene uh, with loads of garage nights being hosted at the venue too. But by the time it reaches 20, 2016, we see a sort of whole, goes round in a whole circle and the venue is back to its roots of variety style performances with comedians such as um, James Acaster playing there as well as numerous drag shows including people from Drag Race and um, Sink the Pink performing there as well. So that shows that it really does go full circle as the venue goes back to its variety roots. I'm looking forward to going to seeing a show there hopefully soon. It's been cancelled I think three times, or not cancelled, it's been delayed now three times but I should be seeing Beans on Toast there in June if um, these restrictions continue to be lifted. So fingers, fingers crossed there. Anyway, so that's the Clapham Grand. We are now going to walk up Lavender Hill. So this is really interesting as well because um, it's called Lavender Hill because uh, apparently uh, before this area was expanded in during the Victorian era it used to be open lavender plains and lavender fields. So so we're going to walk up there and we're going to head over to Battersea Art Centre. 
So um, next to Battersea Arts Centre, there's a really ugly concrete looking building. Um, this used to be uh, something known as the Shakespeare Theatre and it opened in 1896 and has a, had a capacity of about around 1,200 200 people. So again, this is a significant music hall and, and house of variety. Like the Clapham Grand, it was converted into a cinema in 1923 and saw a subsequent slow decline. During the Second World War, it was damaged by, um, by bombs and then it was later and knocked down by the council and rebuilt into the monstrosity which is there today. However, next to it is a much more magnificent building uh, where what is now Battersea Art Centre built in the former town hall and this has a really really interesting history so not directly a music hall but it is now a current place of entertainment and variety performances and has a rich history of both music um, and politics stretching back over a hundred years the art center was originally built as the as the town hall for battersea in 1893 and it became the center of political cultural and social social life in the London borough of Battersea. In 1900 they had an organ installed in the main hall which was designed by Robert Hope Jones um, and he was a famous organ designer who would go on to design and create the first ever theatre organ. In fact the organ survives and is still there today and it's the largest surviving Hope organ in left in the world. It also has a really radical history too. So Emmeline and Christabel Pankhurst, um, they both hosted debates and meetings for the suffragettes within, within the main hall, uh, as well as a gentleman named John Archer. He became mayor of, um, of Battersea and he was actually the first ever black London borough mayor to be elected. Also, since then, loads of musicians have played there, including the Jam and Fleetwood Mac. However, by 1978, it was the council threatened with budget cuts, threatened to close this venue. However, um, the community club together got the correct amount of funding and managed to open it as, as an art centre a year later. In 1974, the building first became an art centre. However, by 1979, the council threatened with spending and budget cuts um, proposed to close to close it as a venue and close the art centre. However, the community, not to be deterred, decided to club together and in true grassroots style, raise the funding. And in 1980, the building was saved and opened as an independent charity. Since then, the story of this venue has been one of ups and downs. And in 2015, the building was tragically ravaged by a fire. However, the organ was saved and despite the fire, they managed to open, I think, 78 hours after the fire. Since then, countless com um, comedians have played here as well as different theatrical performances. A relaxed venue is a venue that is accessible to everyone and they go forward with the philosophy that what makes someone disabled is not their disability themselves, it's not anything physical or what's in their mind, it's the constructs of society and how society decides to treat them. It's that and society that makes someone disabled, not their disability or their or their mind. And this is the attitude that the art centre has adopted and are trying and making their venue accessible for everyone. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed looking at this venue. We're now going to head up and we're gonna to head towards Clapham, through Clapham Common and over to the Clapham Picture House. Um, unlike the others, this was not a musical. It was first opened in 1900 as a cinema and a lot of money was poured into this building. But unlike the other venues we've looked at today, the Clapham Picture House opened in 1910 as a cinema and it opened to serve the elites of Clapham. The original cinema was built on Venn Street in the old stables, but it later expanded in 1916 to overlook the High Street. And you can see this sort of grand exterior for the entrance is still visible on the high street today. As well as this grand exterior on the high street, it also had a really grand interior, um, again reflecting the patrons who had come who had come to it, who were from the sort of wealthier end of, Clap of the Clapham elite. However, despite the grandiose surrounding the exterior and surrounding the interior of this cinema, uh, it still, they still ran into financial difficulty in 1918, and many of this, much of the extensions proposed for the venue were never actually completed. Today it is a 
one of London's picture house cinemas so you can still go in there and enjoy a film. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this look through um, three of Clapham's music halls and entertainment venues. So we've sort of looked at the Clapham Grand, we've looked at Battersea Arts Centre and the Shakespeare Theatre and then we've looked at the Clapham Picture House. Anyway, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please, if you have enjoyed this, please go and share it with anyone else you might find it interesting. And next time you're going for a walk around Clapham, take a look up, check the history of some of these magnificent venues who really and they really were significant in paving the way for the future of entertainment and created the rock stars and pop stars of their day. Please stay safe everyone and I'll see you on the next video. Anyway, see ya.